My name is Hugo. Uh, this is my mugshot, and I can be reached at uh, Bernie H on Twitter and Tahoe Ninjas at blog. I'm an MVP and a proud member of the uh, PMP team. And today I will be talking about a web part that I originally built uh, without SPFX. It was a web part that I created for a college uh, that wanted to allow students to upload their own photo ID. Now the problem is at that age, uh, those students are not always making the best decisions. That's why we have to put messages like do not eat laundry detergent. I mean, it's their fault for making the laundry detergent look so delicious, but you know, uh, you know, those people were not necessarily making the best decisions when they were uploading their pictures. And they had a person full-time reviewing photo IDs that people were submitting. So the requirements were, um, and I like this quote, by the way, by Douglas Adams that says, you know, that basically if you try to design something that's completely foolproof, it's because you underestimate the ingenuity of complete fools. Uh, so we tried to do something that was foolproof, uh, but it would require students to be able to upload passport style pictures. That would be a one to one ratio, like a square picture, only one person per picture. And it should be the student's own picture, not their children or pet. And trust me, you, would, you wouldn't believe the pictures we got. No avatars, no drawing, no uh, racy images. Yes, we did get racy and adult images. Uh, no hats, uh, but religious headwear should be permitted, and no sunglasses. You know, and again, the whole idea was to be able to automatically approve the pictures so that we wouldn't have to have someone just manually reviewing pictures so those people could spend their time doing useful stuff. So the web part that I'll be showing today is a web part that will automatically review those, and you can see here the requirements are, are validated and tells you what's wrong. Uh, and the idea is to allow students to actually uh, create uh, good pictures, upload pictures that are automatically approved, like this one here from Visa. I may have uh, overridden the age there, by the way. It was more like 29. Uh, so how do we do that? Well, SPFX to the rescue. Let's get to the demo. So well, the first thing is this web part that you'll be seeing here today is already available uh, for you in the uh, SPFX web part uh, samples repo. Uh, you can use it as is and you'll see it's uh, completely customizable. Let's start with talking about the computer vision services. So with uh, Azure Cognitive Services, uh, you have the ability to actually uh, upload pictures or submit pictures and have them automatically reviewed. So for example, if I uh, look for a picture here and I take, uh, let's say this picture here, uh, if the demo guys are with me, so you'll see that it's automatically identifying information about this picture. And it's identifying uh, keywords uh, like a person, man, woman, uh, camera. It's just missing TV really. Uh, so that's that's great. And we can actually do that by also calling the APIs directly. So if you go to the API, you can actually make post uh, or get request on different things. Uh, and it'll document everything you need to do. So you pick a location and then you specify the features you want to identify. So we want adult, we want categories, we want description faces and things like that. Uh, and then uh, you can also detect celebrities. And one of the reasons why it detects celebrities is because we used to have jokers that would submit pictures of celebrities pretending that it was them. And then when you submit the picture, you can determine whether it's a URL to a picture, a binary stream, or multiform data, which is what I'll be using. And the response you get looks uh, a little something like this, where you get a JSON structure, with it's never a hundred percent right we're using uh, machine learning here so it's never a hundred percent but it's definitely a high confidence 99 percent confidence uh, that these things are you know not racy for example and things like that so what you need to do to get this going is you can go to your azure and uh, you can create a new uh, ai cognitive service uh, resource in azure and it'll create a key and an endpoint for you I'm not going to share my key with you, but uh, th that's the problem, right? So if you have an API key and it's supposed to be secret, 
you probably don't want to allow your users to, or ask your users when they configure the web part to enter the key. At the same time, you probably don't want to hard code those values in your web part. And this is where there's a really cool feature that I don't think many people know about. It's the SharePoint online tenant properties. And what it allows you to do, it allows you to call a REST API from within your web part to uh, retrieve properties that you want to store centrally at your tenant level. And there are no REST APIs to, that I know of to set the, the properties, but you can actually use things like PMP PowerShell or Office 365 to do this. So you would call with Office 365, you'd call the SPO storage entity, and then you would give it a, a unique name, a unique value. For example, I'll, I, I use the very original Azure key and Azure endpoint. Uh, and then when I call the REST API from within the web part, I get the value. So this is a great way to allow me to deploy web parts uh, that have secret APIs or secret keys or secret values that I don't want people to see. For the purpose of the demo, however, I did customize the web part so that when if you don't specify the, the storage entity, it will automatically uh, show the uh, prompt the user to enter this. So let's see. All right, so this is my web part. And as soon as you do this, so you can see here, because I didn't use tenant properties, I have to configure it. Uh, so to configure it here, uh, I have to provide again my key, which I will copy, and my endpoint. And by the way, if uh, anybody is uh, displaying, like asking questions, I can't see the, the chat window. I just want to point out here, this element here is you'll you'll notice it's actually rich text that I've displayed inside of the property pane. And this is usually not trivial to do, but there's a new PMP reusable property pane control uh, that's currently in beta that allows you to use things like Markdown to actually create text. This is a great way to provide guidance for your users when you want uh, or help or support information uh, when you want people to do this. And then uh, at the bottom here, I can say I want uh, portrait photos. I don't want to allow, allow clip art, uh, racy images, adult images, and so on and so forth. And I'll come back to the forbidden tags if I have time. So now all I should be able to do here is I should be able to just uh, drag, uh, drag and drop, click, or things like so. If I pick, for example, this picture here, which is a real passport picture, uh, and if I, I can just kind of crop it. When I click Submit, you'll see the gratuitous animation, and then it says, yes, this is a picture, uh, and I'll uh, click Update later. Let's try a different picture. So if I use, uh, let's say, this picture here, uh, this is actually not a passport picture. This is not a, a portrait. This is kind of a, just a, a mugshot, right? So let's see. Vesa, I'm sorry, but uh, IT hasn't been uh, can, uh, kind to you. Uh, it says you're 53. Uh, just for fun, let's look at the slightly younger picture here. Again, this should not get approved, but let's see. Uh, oh, it didn't like that. Uh, let's try a different picture here. So if I look at, uh, for example, I take a picture of me before I've had my first coffee in the morning, and I submit that, uh, it should automatically detect that this is a gory picture. Now, I know everybody's looking for, for me to show a, uh, an adult picture. I'm not going to show an adult picture. I will, however, show a picture of my f future wife. Um, and if I actually take this picture here, which is as, as racy as, as I could uh, do in this call, and I submit that, it should automatically detect that this is a racy picture. Now, uh, all the call information that we're getting behind the scene, all the information I'm in the web part sample, I'm actually outputting the, the return information in the console. So if you're ever interested to see what kind of analysis uh, we're getting, this is all the information here. So see here, it's actually saying, yes, it is racy content, and there's a lot of information. So if I take a real picture of me instead, just to show, uh, you know, that this thing works, and I just go like this, I submit, it'll actually say, hey, this is not a, uh, this is not a portrait. It'll also say, hey, did anyone ever tell you uh, how much you look like Daniel Craig? It's, uh, I get that all the time. 
So I'll just change this to be more like a passport photo and I can just click an update, All right? So this is the same uh, web part now. Uh, I could actually use the camera uh, if I wanted to, uh, and this works on mobile devices as well. Hello, everyone. Smile. Uh, yeah, they say the camera at uh, 10 pounds, so I'm probably overlaying about three cameras. Uh, so I'm showing here my profile picture, and I guess I should have showed you when I when I click on update, my profile picture should always update here. There you go. Uh, so we've got a few more minutes, so let me get to the code, show you the code, unless there's a specific picture that anyone wants to see. But let's do this. So the first thing we do is we in the web part, we have a storage entity service that I've created, which just gets the API, calls the API that we talked about. And we use both the, the storage key as the name. So that's the API key and the, the API key and the API endpoint. And then I just do a regular HTTP response or uh, request to get the information. And then whatever value is coming from the JSON structure, I'm just looking at the dot value and I'm returning that back to my entity service. In my analysis services, uh, yes, I'll actually verify multiple people as well. In my analysis services, what I do is I just grab the API key and endpoint, whether it was provided by the tenant storage or by the, by the web part configuration. And then I do some very embarrassing uh, search and replace to remove all the, the, the prefix to say that this is an image so that I can get just a base 64 uh, buffer image that I can pass. And you'll see here that I just passed the API key and the API endpoint to Azure Cognitive Services. And then I just say, as you saw in the, in the um, API uh, documentation, these are the sets of information I'm looking for. And for some reason, I noticed that I'm passing tags twice. Uh, it just ignores that. But I want here, is it adult? Is it, uh, you know, what kind of images and so on and so forth. Now, the web part has this little bit here at the bottom that shows you whether your web part meets the criteria or not. This is done in a web, in an element called analysis dialog content. Uh, it is derived from the uh, SPFX dialog, so it allows me to overlay everything on top of the page and block everything else on the page. So what I do here is I just call my web service or my service, which calls the cognitive services, and then I do some analysis. And this is kind of embarrassing how I do this, but I just go through every single connection, you know, like let's look at the categories. Is this a, a valid portrait? Is there only one person? And so on and so forth. And then I use state uh, to actually store the information so that the screen refreshes automatically. And then I'm using some very simple React rendering to render information like, is this valid or not? Now I created the custom uh, checklist control because I wanted to be able to, I was too lazy to kind of rinse and repeat every time that I wanted to say, is it valid, yes or no? So I just created an analysis checklist component uh, that I use uh, to display the list. And then finally, when I want to update photo, uh, I have two methods in there, one that uses the PMPGS, one that uses the graph. Uh, I was honestly having some problems with the PMPGS. If only I knew people on the call that could help me with this. Uh, but I, I just called the, uh, the graph uh, using the regular uh, graph API method, and I'll show you the page for that. I'm not actually doing so well with handling the error. Right now, I just write the, that to the console. I should probably put a nice message or not so nice message when there's an error, but you get the point. And then finally, uh, the part that I was telling you, the rich text in the, I have hyperlinks here and bold in the property pane. Uh, and if you've used property panes, it's not always easy to do that. So we are using the brand new property pane markdown content uh, control that allows you to pass markdown. And so all I can do here, all I need to do is pass a, a string, localized string resource that contains my markdown. And so in my localized content, I have my cool 
uh, marked down there. And so you see the hyperlinks and the, the two stars for the bold content. That's the documentation for the property pane markdown content, which is currently in beta. Uh, hopefully it'll be released soon. You can get that to the PMP GitHub that I owe uh, at the URL below. So what we covered today, and I've got a few more minutes, so I'll actually demo some additional images, but what we uh, covered today is Azure Cognitive Services using SharePoint Online tenant properties to hide uh, secrets that you don't necessarily want uh, to ask users to configure, using Graph to save profile pictures, and the brand new property pane markdown content control. You can find the code at the URL, and you can reach me at this uh, uh, at my blog and my Twitter account. Let's go back to the cool web part for a second. And so we asked, someone asked, uh, can it detect multiple pictures? So this is a poster from a session that David and I are going to be doing at the PNP uh, conference. It should detect two faces, hopefully. Uh, oh, it only detected one. That's embarrassing. Oh yes, I remember, because I gotta do this. Uh, no, it didn't work. Oh well. Uh, okay, let me just prove that this works. Let me sh just show this really uh, picture of awesome, cool looking people here uh, and submit. You can see Bert is not too impressed here that he's on the picture. And yes, it detects four pictures and says you shouldn't do that. And then we had a question to ask a uh, picture of uh, Parker. I don't have a picture of Parker. But awesome demo. Awesome. Oh, yeah, uh, we very much appreciate it. Uh, uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. Very great to see that. And the integration with Cognitive Services is uh, really exciting to see. Love seeing that. Uh, so thank you uh, to Hugo. Mm -hmm.